I just want to make sure that I have my sound levels set up correctly so that I will be recording and not distorting. This video is meant to explore the use of the OpenShot video editor and in particular I wanted to explore how to um, edit the curves with which we can animate the properties of a video clip. So this is OpenShot the video editor for, for, for open source uh, software, including Linux. It's version 2.3.4. And the way we include a video file or an, um, a, a picture file as one of our project files is to click on that plus sign. Uh, there may be other ways, but that's the most obvious way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my documents folder. I'm going to go into a subfolder. And eventually I'm going to go into my videos and there's actually a trailer here for the movie Bro Brotherhood of the Wolf. So I'm just going to select that into my project and drag it into one of my timelines to show how the basic usage is for OpenShot. I've, I've dragged it into track 4 which is on top of the other tracks and I'm going to play a little bit just to see just to show what happens when we preview our production a little bit. So it starts off rather slowly and yet eventually we discover that that the video clip that we've inserted plays which is a good thing because that's what we expected to do. But an effect that I can apply to this video clip is to have it fade in as an example of what I meant. So the way to initiate this is to to to, to right click and then once you've right clicked to select fade and um, I'm going to say at the start of the clip I want it to fade in as slowly as possible. I've only got two speeds here fast and slow so I'm going to type I'm going to I'm going to click on fade in slow. So now if I play the video this is what's going to happen. You're going to notice that the fading in is still too fast. In fact, the way the video fades in right now gets confused rather easily with the, uh, the, the way, with the fact that the video already faded in the beginning of its sequence. So it fades in and then fades out and fades back in again and obviously that's not what I wanted. And so the, the next question is how can I change the, the way in which the fade in takes place? And the only hint that the timeline editor gives me is it gives me a little green dot where the keyframe was inserted to do the, the fading in effect. And I'd like to change that the position of that keyframe to someplace else. So the way to do this with OpenShot is to right click on the track and to click on properties. And you're going to notice that the alpha here already has a, um, a little icon that indicates that uh, a curve is being applied. And so one of the things that I can do is I can use this in order to change the way I, the, the keyframes work. I can uh, move the, the cursor or the, uh, the, 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 uh, the time marker to some other point in time and because there are actually two keyframes at the beginning of the video, I can right click on the property and I can say remove keyframe. And now contrary to what some people might expect, the keyframe, the, the alpha value is, is stuck at zero because the first keyframe that placed the alpha value at zero is still there. I've just removed the second keyframe that causes that that determines the end point of the effect. So now that I've done that, I can simply decide that I want to change the alpha value. I can simply decide that at the new position of this time slider, I want the alpha value to have become 1. And so I type in 1, I hit enter, and now I've got a um, a linear a linear curve here where before I had a curve. But now if I if I try to play the sequence, this is what I'm going to get. So the fading in is much slower now. It, I mean, whatever the video is also doing, uh, basically 
it's becoming more and more solid gradually over time. And finally, it's when it reaches when it reaches this green marker, it's going to be at full opacity. It's going to be at, at alpha value one at as as of that marker. And that's the basic method by which keyframes are manipulated in OpenShot. It, OpenShot doesn't have an explicit menu for for uh, for repositioning these keyframes, other than to do what I just what I just said. What I can do, however, is I can change the curve itself, which means that where right now I've got linear, I can change it to a Bezier, and there are many different choices as to what type of uh, what type of Bezier curve I can choose. So there's there are the various ease in functions, and there are the ease out functions. I obviously want to ease in, and I let's say I want to ease in using a cubic spline. So I simply select that from the curve editor. And so now, if I play the same, if I play the same couple of seconds at the beginning of my production, I'm, you're going to notice that the way the effect fades in is much more, much more subtle. So the the the, the, the pointer is advancing; it's still very dark, but then s very careful, gradually the 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 opacity picks up. The image becomes more solid. And it finally goes to full intensity somewhere near the end of the curve. Right, so we have the capabilities set out for us to 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 to, to control these Bezier curves and to control these these animations of a single property of the video clip. Now, if I wanted to get rid of both of these um, keyframes that have little tiny green marks here and nothing else to show me that they exist. I basically have to do it twice. I say remove the keyframe so that the keyframe at the end has just disappeared and the alpha is just at zero. And now if I right click on alpha a second time, I've got a second uh, capacity to remove a keyframe. So now I've removed both keyframes and what I will discover is that I should no longer have any animation of this property of the clip. It's at full alpha, so in other words, it's at full opacity, and yet I've removed what I did. I've, I've actually removed the animation of this property of the clip. And that pretty much summarizes what I wanted to shoot the screencast about. So I, I wish, I do not want to save the project, I wish all of my listeners good luck, because um, happy, happy video.